Hi, I'm Luca Congedo, and in this tutorial we are going to see how to use remote sensors through an interface that is similar to the semi-automatic classification plugin using uh, Jupyter. In particular, we are going to use a Google Colab uh, Jupyter notebook, and here we are going to uh, first install remote sensors and start a new session. All the dependencies that are required by remote sensors are already installed in Google Colab. This is the first step, so basically the only command to install remote sensors is this one pip install remote sensors. So first we run this command here. We get this warning message because uh, this notebook was not authored by Google, so we click this uh, run anyway. And as you can see, the remote sensors package is being downloaded and installed in Google Colab. Well, now we can import the remote sensors and start a new session. In particular, we are going to define uh, the number of processes used uh, during processing, the available RAM, uh, which is, uh, uh, in this case, the RAM available in Google Colab. We can also set uh, a level of the log to limit the messages only to warnings. So now we can uh, run import remote or census and uh, launch the session using this variable rs that we are going to use also later. So rs will be the remote or census session. We click here to run the command. And after a few seconds, we can see here that the command is, has been executed. And now we can start the interface of the remote or census in the Jupyter interface. The Jupyter interface can be activated through this command, rs.jupyter. We can launch several uh, kinds of interfaces, uh, which are uh, defined uh, according to the purpose of the work. In particular, there is a specific interface for searching and downloading products, satellite images. And this interface can be launched with this command. The interface has several sections, a progress bar, a section for searching products, the list of products, the uh, command to download uh, the image in the product list, an interactive map where previews can be displayed, and a file browser uh, to browse uh, directories and select or create new files. Uh, of course, for further details about the, the interface of the same automatic classification plugin, please refer to this uh, link to the user manual. In this tutorial, we're going to download and process a Sentinel-2 uh, tile, in particular this one, uh, T32TPR. And please note that the, the interface is still in development, so only a few tools are available. So we can start here the interface for downloading uh, products, satellite images. Here we can see uh, now it is uh, loaded. Uh, we can see here the sections, the search products section, where we can set uh, the upper left and the lower right uh, boundaries of a search area. We can select uh, the products from this list. We can set uh, the range of dates, date from and date to uh, of the query. We can set uh, a maximum cloud cover, and also we can set uh, the number of results. And here in advanced, we can set uh, a filter. We can set name based on the tile name. And we can click this button find to start the query. Here in the product list, we'll see uh, the results of the search. And in the download section here, we can select uh, single bands to download and click run to download the bands. And here we have the map where we can uh, see the previews interactively. And we can also use this button here to click in the map and define uh, the boundary box of the search area. Here, as you can see, a uh, box has been defined here, and the coordinates of this box are also displayed here in the interface. Here you can see the upper left and lower right coordinates. 
we can remove this as we are going to use the uh, tile name for this uh, query. So we are going to use, for instance, uh, the tile uh, T32TPR in advanced here. We select uh, uh, the Sentinel-2, uh, in particular we are going to select here Sentinel-2 uh, MPC, which is the Microsoft repository of Sentinel-2 images. We can also define a range of dates, so for instance uh, we can select here dates uh, of uh, December 2023. We also defined the maximum cloud cover, for instance, uh, 10%. And the number of results, uh, we can get just one image, for instance. And we click Find. As you can see here, uh, the progress bar has briefly appeared. And in the product list, now we have uh, uh, the first uh, and only uh, item of the list. We can click this uh, item, which is the product uh, found uh, by the query and after a few seconds we will see here the preview of this image on the right here as you can see this is the preview of this uh, sentinel 2 tile we can also display the preview in the map using this button here and after a few seconds we'll see the preview in the map uh, we also have the legend here and as you can see here, this is the preview of the above image. So now we can uh, download the uh, selected bands here. We can, for instance, uh, uh, select uh, uh, only the 10 meters and 20 meter bands of Sentinel-2. So we can uh, uncheck, for instance, band 1, band 9, and band 10. And also uh, we can uh, pre-process automatically uh, the images as uh, the same automatic classification plugin does with this uh, checkbox activated for process images. So uh, now we can click run and after we click run we'll see that uh, at the bottom of the interface we have the file browser where we can select uh, a directory in the cloud Google Colab. We can uh, use these buttons on the right to uh, go to the parent directory there is no double click in the interface at the moment. So we select, for instance, the home directory. We can click open dir to open the directory. And we can use this button uh, to create a new directory after, for instance, defining a name, data, and click the, the button create directory. We select the new directory and click the button select. And now, as you can see, the interface is no longer active. And we can see that uh, at the top of the interface, we have the uh, progress bar, uh, where we can see that the download of products uh, started. And of course, after a few minutes, we'll see uh, that the progress has disappeared. And if we browse the files in the Google Colab interface, we can see here the data, the directory of the Sentinel-2 image and the preprocessed images in this uh, directory uh, starting with our team. So uh, now we have uh, uh, preprocessed the Sentinel-2 image on the cloud using Google Colab and using the interface which is uh, similar to the same automatic classification plugin. We can also uh, use the remote or census tools, uh, which are integrated uh, through the interface. For instance, we can interact with the uh, default catalog, which is the band set catalog uh, used by interface to define band sets. And we can also uh, in interact with the spectral signature catalog uh, using this uh, variable here, which is the variable used for uh, the training input. And we can also use uh, this uh, function here to uh, get the second band set, which was created automatically during the preprocessing of the Sentinel-2 image, and print the bands uh, as a, a table, as you can see. So we click Run, and as you can see, we have here printed the band set name, the coordinate reference system, 
in the table with the bands and the band number and also the path to the bands. As you can see here, we have 10 bands, which are the preprocessed Sentinel-2 images. So uh, in order to uh, speed up the processing in this tutorial, we can also set uh, a bounding box with, this, uh, uh, with a list of coordinates, left, top, right, and bottom, uh, which can be uh, set uh, using this command here, get to, to get the second band set, and box coordinate list, uh, uh, which is uh, I've already defined here the coordinates, so now we have uh, a subset of the image and we can perform the classification. We can use this uh, interface, the classification interface, using this command. Uh, in particular, the classification interface is composed of the following section. So a band set section, an input section to uh, select uh, the classification input, an algorithm section for the selection of the classification algorithm, and of course a run section for performing the classification. We also have a progress bar, uh, also a map for interactive creation of training areas and the display of RGB color composites, the ROI and signature list for managing training areas, also a signature plot panel for displaying the spectral signature plots, and a file browser to uh, browse directories and files. So we can also uh, create uh, uh, polygons in the map uh, interactively or using a region growing algorithm as we can perform uh, in the same automatic classification plugin. And also considering uh, the compatibility between the remote or census and the same automatic classification plugin, in the future, it will be possible to train the algorithm on the cloud and perform the classification also in the local PC and vice versa. So we can click uh, this button to start the classification interface. Here, as you can see, the interface has loaded. And we have the band set section. Here we have a first band set, which is empty. And the second band set, which is the Sentinel-2 uh, band set. We can click this button to display the second band set here. As you can see, the, all the bands in the band set. We can also click this button here to delete uh, the first band set, which is empty. And we can also use this button to add, uh, for instance, a new band set. And also use this button to add bands to a new band set. Uh, arrow buttons to move the bands uh, up or down. And use this button to delete single bands. So for instance, we can add an empty band set, the band set 2. As you can see here. And for instance, we can add the bands using this button. Now we should go uh, at the bottom of the interface where there is the file browser here at the bottom. And here in the file browser, we can open the directory of the Sentinel-2 preprocessed bands and for instance, select uh, a few bands. Click this button, select. And if we go back to the top of the interface, we can see here that the band set 2 has been filled with these uh, five bands. We can use this button to uh, order the bands in the band set and use this list to select uh, the product and automatically define the center wavelength of bands, as you can see here. So uh, we have the, the first band set we are going to use for classification with all the bands, uh, Sentinel-2 bands. So we can go here in the input section, we can select uh, here the band set to classify. Here we can also define uh, to use an input normalization 
or use the uh, macro class ID or class ID uh, for training. Here, in the algorithm section, we can select uh, the classification algorithm. We have the list of available algorithms here, and all the options are listed here. So we can have, for instance, uh, the classification for maximum likelihood with these options, the classification for minimum distance, the multilayer perception, where we can define, for instance, uh, the framework to be used, uh, Scikit or PyTorch, and define the structure of the hidden layers. We also have the random forest algorithm here with all the options and for instance we can set the, the number of trees here. We also have the spectral angle mapping and the subtle vector machine. Well, so if we go uh, down in the interface we have the run button to perform the classification uh, here in the map section, we have the uh, Royan signature list where we are going to define training areas uh, that will be used for classification. We have here the interactive map where we are going to display the RGB color composite and we are going to create the uh, Roy polygons. But first, we should create a training input or open a training input file if already prepared. So we click this button here to create a new training input. We go to the file browser section. We go, for instance, to a parent directory and we create a, a new file here, for instance, training, and click this button, new file. And if we go back here, you can see that the path to the training input file has been displayed here. And now we can start to collect training areas. But first we can display uh, the RGB color composite using this tool here. For instance, select the 732 uh, color composite. And after a few seconds, the image has been loaded in the map. We can use this button to zoom to the band set here, as you can see. This is the subset that we have defined. And we have here the virtual band set in the layers. So we can uh, display or hide the virtual band set here. We can, of course, also change the color composite, for instance, 3 to 1. And we can use this button to create a polygon, a Roy polygon. So now we can click in the map using the left button of the mouse here. As you can see here, this. Uh, and we click this button to finish the, the polygon. And now we can uh, save the polygon to the training input file. So the macro class ID and the class ID. And for instance, we set uh, water for class name and macro class name. And we also click this button to define the color of the class and macro class water, for instance, blue. So now that we have defined the parameters of this uh, training area, we can click this button, save to training input. And after a few seconds, you can see here the progress bar. After a few seconds, we have this first training area, which is the water class. We can also use this button here to perform region growing to create the polygon. So I click in the map now. And as you can see here, this is a polygon performed uh, with these parameters of distance. We can increase the distance parameter to create a larger polygon. And now we click in the map again. And as you can see, the polygon is much larger. So we can, uh, for instance, set uh, an intermediate value, then click in the map. And now we have uh, a polygon that we can use, for instance, for the class soil. We can also uh, show and hide this temporary uh, ROI. So uh, and we can also show and hide the, the training input, as you can see here. So now we can uh, define the 
macro class and class of this uh, training area. So for instance, soil. We select a color, for instance, yellow for the soil class. And click this button to save the training input. Here we have added a new uh, region of interest. And now we can create uh, a few other polygons, for instance, for the built up class here. We have created the polygons and click the button finish. And now we have uh, this third macro class built up. Uh, also built up for the class. And now we select the color of the class, for instance, red. Okay, so now we click the Save to Training Input. And we have saved our third region of interest. Uh, one last uh, region over vegetation, for instance, here. click finish. Now we can save the fourth macro class, vegetation, and class again vegetation. Then we click this button to select the, for example, green of the class vegetation and click the button save. So now we have four uh, region of interest we can show and hide here these black polygons in the map. If we select all these uh, regions, we can also uh, plot the spectral signature. Using this button, we have displayed the signature plot of these four uh, regions of interest. Of course, we should create uh, several other uh, ROIs. And uh, of course, we could also display a classification preview. Uh, but first, we should define the input band set, so the first one, to use the macro class ID, and for example, select the random forest algorithm. So, for instance, we set uh, 100 for the number of trees. We could also change the other parameters. And uh, then we click uh, Run here. And then we go to the file browser section and select a new file, for instance, classification, and click the button New File. So after we click New File, we will see that the classification has started here, as you can see the progress bar. So, uh, of course, uh, it will take a few minutes. And so, after a few minutes, uh, the classification has been performed. As we can see here, it has been loaded in the map. As you can see with the colors that we defined for the region of interest. And we can see here in the Google Colab panel that the classification file has been uh, created and we can, for instance, download to our local PC. There is also a full interface available. This is the command to display the full interface, uh, which uh, unfortunately cannot be displayed in Google Colab because it requires uh, IPy widgets, uh, at least of version 8. Uh, so uh, at the moment, it's not available in Google Colab. And in the end, it's always good to close the remote census session to remove the temporary files and stop sub-processes uh, using this command. So in other tutorials we'll see other functions of the remote or census and thank you for watching. <laughs>